When you go to the doctor, this is what you might picture. But lately, more and more people are going to the doctor virtually. Hi, Sammy, good to see you as well. Similar to what we're doing now on FaceTime. It's a FaceTime visit with the patient. We talk about symptoms, we ask to do an exam, and then help decide on the next stage in the plan. Give it a cough for me and let me see how it sounds. Instead of going to the doctor's office and exposing yourself to more germs, you could join the virtual waiting room from the comfort of your own home. Duke, isn't that fun? You don't have to go to a waiting room. This week, Basin MD had on average 30 to 40 people in the virtual waiting room at a time. The reason why this has really taken off in interest now is because it is so critically important to stay away from these public areas for a person who could be potentially infected or for a person who has a chronic illness where catching uh, something like COVID-19 would cause long-term or serious health consequences. But even before COVID-19, telemedicine was taking off. There, there's been a big surge in telemedicine for probably six to 10 years, but it just has never gained traction because people like that personal interaction with their physician. And so it, it it's very likely that with this pandemic and demonstrating to people how easy these virtual medicine appointments are, I think it will help it gain traction and take off so that a lot more of our routine visits can be handled in a virtual way. Depending on your insurance and how you use the virtual appointment, the cost is the same as it would be in person. Just this week, Medicare announced they are including teledoctors in their coverage. For Dr. Hewn, it's no surprise. In fact, she thinks it's the medicine of the future. I, I think in the future, my regular office will be a mix of half and half virtual visits versus in-person visits. In Midland, Sammy Steele, News West 9.